If you have ever been curious about key values, significance levels, or how to tell if your results are statistically significant then this video is for you. Welcome to Statistics Basics. In this video, we'll break down these concepts in simple terms, so you can confidently interpret your data and draw meaningful conclusions. Imagine you're testing a new drug, is it truly effective, or are any improvements you see just due to random chance? Similarly, if a coin lands on heads 10 times in a row, is it a coincidence, or is something else going on? These are the types of questions that p-values help us answer. In statistical hypothesis testing, we define a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. We then assume the null hypothesis is true and use a probability distribution model to calculate the likelihood of our observed results. Considering the case of flipping a coin, we define the null hypothesis as the coin being fair, meaning we would expect 50% heads and 50% tails over many flips. If we repeat this process multiple times and recording the proportion of heads in each set of flips, the resulting distribution of proportions would form a bell curve centered around 50%. However, even with a fair coin, some sets of flips will deviate from this perfect 50-50 split due to random chance. This distribution is the sampling distribution of the sample proportion under the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, proposes that the coin is biased, meaning the true proportion of heads is not equal to 50%. Let's say your experiment yields a surprising result, like the coin landing on heads far more often than expected. This is where the p-value comes in. In this scenario, the p-value represents to the area in the right tail of the null distribution that is more extreme than the observed sample proportion. This p-value represents the probability of obtaining a test statistic as extreme as, or even more extreme than, the one observed, assuming the null hypothesis is true. A small p-value suggests that the effect you observed is probably not just due to chance, and the coin might be biased. However, the p-value does not guarantee that the observed difference is statistically significant. But how much smaller should the p-value be to make a decision about the null hypothesis? There's always a chance of error, and it's crucial to determine how small the p-value needs to be to confidently make a decision about the null hypothesis. To address this, you set a significance level, often denoted as alpha, before starting your experiment. This acts as a cutoff point for determining statistical significance. If your calculated p-value falls below this chosen significance level, you reject the null hypothesis that your result is just due to chance. You can then conclude that your observed result is statistically significant at the chosen alpha level. If you'd like to test your knowledge on this topic, be sure to check the quiz link in the description below or visit our community page. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe for more statistics content.